Hi folks, this is Mr. Mega Man Fan. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You know all the things to do. What you're about to see may look like it's a box of Japanese candy, but in fact, it is a homebrew device for Sega Saturn called the Satiator. This thing allows you to play Sega Saturn games through the expansion port of your Sega Saturn off a micro SD card. So I'm gonna unbox it. I'm gonna show you how to set it up and we'll see how well it works. Stay tuned. So if you're anything like me, the battery in your Sega Saturn probably needs replacing and the Satiator needs a battery to function. So get yourself whatever brand of 2032 batteries you like. Doesn't have to be Energizer. You can get them at any store. You can get them online if you want to. And of course, you're gonna need a micro SD card. I'm choosing a 256 because of the size of Sega Saturn games, but I'm pretty sure 128, 64, 32 would probably be enough. I just didn't want to take any chances. I'd run out of room if I do fan translations or homebrews or anything of that sort. So I went a little more robust than might actually be necessary. And of course, we have the Satiator itself. Such a cute little box. It really looks like it's got Pocky or something inside of it, but that's not the case here. It's pretty small, but that's because it's meant to go into a port that was originally used for video discs, not digital video discs, because the Saturn can't do that, but like back when movies used to come on four compact discs, you could put a video module in there for playback, and I think the video module also enabled you to do karaoke in some cases, but outside of Japan, it really wasn't much use for people, even though it was still left in there. And when people were trying to figure out how to run homebrew, it seemed like the natural thing to exploit. And eventually a way was found to exploit it. What's nice about this is it's another soft modding way to play homebrew and backups. You don't have to physically modify your Sega Saturn in any way. You just have to put your micro SD card in here and then put this in the expansion slot. I'll get to that after we format the micro SD card and put the necessary files on there. Now here we have our handy web installation guide. And according to this, you do not need to have your formatted card in FAT32 format. It says XFAT is fine out of the box, which is what I have. So I'll go ahead and proceed to the next step. You need a copy of the menu. By the way, this is all at satiator.net. S-A-T-I-A-T-O-R.net. I'll put a link in the description. But now you need a copy of the menu the software that runs on the Saturn and shows you your library. Just grab this file, grab the latest firmware, and plonk the satiator.fw on your card as well. If it's different to the satiator's version, it will automatically update, signified by a triple green blink of the LED. When it's done, just cycle power to continue with the new firmware. There's only one disk image in a folder. The satiator will start the game when you open the folder. All right. So I'll need to put a backup on my micro SD card of a Sega Saturn game I own, and then we will proceed. I certainly have plenty of options in terms of what Sega Saturn game to back up and put on here, so. We'll do that and then we'll be right back. All right, this is where things really get fun. Now I have to take my Sega Saturn, put the new battery in it and put the satiator in it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Unplug a few cords first. And you will see that the battery slot and the satiator slot are right here on the left hand side on the back of your Saturn. That's where you put both, which is what I'll do. 
And when the satiator is plugged in, you'll hear a satisfying little thunk that tells you you've pushed it all the way into the expansion pins on the back. So now I'll put the cover back on it. In theory, this should just be as simple as turning on the power and the magic happens. Let's find out. And there it is. Well, it really is that easy. Okay. Let's try again. When we find that media, we'll find out the Huawei. Yeah, this is one of the easiest boss fights in Mega Man history. But it should be, because it's a prelude to a cutscene. <laughs> The only way to change games is to cycle the power. There is no menu break system of any kind. Unfortunate, but you're still loading games off of micro SD instead of putting wear and tear on your physical disc. So maybe that's a trade off that's worth it, especially given what some Sega Saturn games are worth. You might prefer to actually use your backups instead. Like Sonic Jam, this is not an inexpensive game. The Japanese version less so than the North American version, but still. Honestly, I'm impressed. I'm not noticing any issues here. No 
cutscene stuttering, no audio lag, no input problems, no nothing. Feels like I'm running it off real disc. Now, it's been noted that the load times won't be any better than the real discs were, but that's because it's basically an optical drive emulator. It's emulating what the real discs do and streaming it to your Saturn through the expansion slot. So I'm okay with that. I don't need it to be faster. I just need it to do what I want. Rougher than knuckles, the hardest of them, tougher than knuckles. You can call me knuckles. Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. I'd rather flex my knuckles. Sound is a little different from the Sega Genesis, but not in a way that I'm complaining about. Sega Satiator! It does what it's supposed to do, and I can't think of a better way to keep my Sega Saturn games in pristine shape than playing them off a micro SD card from this point on.